Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Courtney. Today is the fall season of the Dollar Tree Mystery Box Challenge. If you are not familiar with this challenge, what it is is there are eight YouTubers who are participating in this challenge. Each of us is given a name of one of the other YouTubers. We then go to Dollar Tree, we purchase a bunch of random supplies, Two of those items are what we consider challenge items. We stick them in the box, we mail it to them, and then once we receive our box, we're gonna open it on camera so you can see us in our reaction for the first time. And then we're gonna craft with those items. We can use items from our stash. Now, if you missed the spring edition as well as the summer, I will link those playlists down below. And today's will also be in a playlist to make it easy for you so that you can make sure you kind of go in order and it all makes sense. Now, who did I send my box to? I sent it to Kristen K. So definitely check out and see what I sent her. She said that it, she kind of felt like I might have sent her some hard items and I feel like every single challenge I'm getting a little bit harder. So I don't know, we'll see. I cannot wait to see what she creates. And then I got my box from Shannon from The Daily DIYer. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm, I haven't opened it, as you can see, it's still taped up. I'm going to open it on camera, see what else in here, and then we'll get crafty. Okay, I got my box cutter, and I also would like to point out, Shannon's very resourceful. She mailed it, and I recognize this box because I have some, it's a Dollar Tree file box. So look at her go. She's got it all down here, okay. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know. I'm always nervous when I open these boxes. I'm also not really good at opening boxes on camera. It's a lot of pressure. Okay, there we go. One more side, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna try not to cut myself. Ah, I'm sorry if I'm wiggling the camera. Ooh. Ooh, okay. All right. All right, all right, all right, okay. I'm gonna set it right down in front of me here. Open the lid. Oh, oh, okay. All right, here we go. Okay, she's got bubble wrap on top. Okay, here's a little card. It says, to Courtney, yes, I shipped your items in a DT file box. See, yep. <laughs> she's all about the theme. Okay. Okay, it says, um, hey Corny, I already know you're going to rock this challenge. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thanks for hosting this fun collab. Hugs and love, Shannon. How sweet, I love this. I save all these little cards, have a whole collection going from other YouTubers. Okay, so the first thing I see, pine cones, okay? My Dollar Tree has never had these, so I'm kind of excited about this. It's a, just a bag of the mini pine cones. All right. I can do that, I can do that, I'm not scared. Okay, let's see, I think these are the challenge items, so we'll save those to last. She has them all wrapped up. Okay, next up, oh dear. An activity tray, it's got compartments, okay. All right, hmm, okay. My wheels are spinning, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, all right. I say okay a lot, in case you haven't noticed on these things. It's my way of processing, so I apologize if you hear me say that eight, nine times. It's a framed thing with unicorns, and it's got the clothespins, and it's got glitter on it. That's a challenge in itself. All right. She's not messing around. Okay. Okay, very nice. A four pack of the little clothespins uh, with the chalkboards on them. So there we go. Do that. Okay, foam, not too hard, all right. Ah, <laughs> book rings. <laughs> okay, this is getting harder. And then there's, oh, all right, a home sign. Okay, and then there's something wrapped up in bubble wrap, so let's see. Ooh. I'm nervous about what the challenge is. kind of cute I've never seen this before it's a little um it's a jewelry box but it's got a what is that a bumblebee a gold bumblebee 
This will now be the Christmas season of bumblebees because I'm going to make it a thing. <laughs> okay, well, it's wrapped up, so I'm not gonna open it. All right, jewelry box. Okay, we're down to the challenge items. Huh. I'm a little nervous. I'm actually a lot nervous. All right, challenge item number one. Oh, Shannon, Shannon, Shannon. Okay. Oh, girlfriend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Shannon. Okay. Wow. This is a challenge item. Oh my gosh. All right. If I pull this off, do I win 1 million points? Because I feel like I should win 1 million points. All right. And the last challenge item oh man okay that pen that just threw me for a loop I was feeling good now I'm like really nervous all right oh my god here ah. <laughs> dang Jaden you don't mess around okay it's a cat fast track with a with a ball in it all right Oh my gosh, what? Okay. Wow. Shannon, you have given me some very challenging items. Okay. All right. Well, now what comes next is I'm going to make magic happen and I'm going to create some things. And if I use this, I win 1 million points. That's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Well, let's get into these DIYs. For the first DIY, I'm going to be working with this pink tray. So when I saw this, I immediately thought, okay, this is a window and I need to cut out these panels. So I heated up my wood burning tool, which any of the supplies you guys see me use, I will try to link down as many as I can down in the description box. And it, it melted just fine. This is what I use to cut the Dollar Tree candy canes when I do those. But as I was doing this, I was thinking to myself, this was probably made in China and I don't know if I should be melting plastic. So <laughs> I did it for a little while, but I realized that it was starting to put little dings and dents in different places that I didn't want it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try my box cutter and see if that works. Sure enough, the box cutter did just a fine job. So I ended up using that for the majority of them and then just using the burning tool in the hard to reach areas. Now that the panels were all cut out, I took some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle, and I'm gonna give this two good coats of paint, making sure to let it dry really, really good on the front. And I went ahead and painted the back as well. And then once that was all dry, I went in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color White, and I dry brushed it on to get it looking to a more distressed appearance. For the inside of the window, I wanted to use this scrap of paper that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to trace around the frame and then cut out this scrapbook paper. And then I wanted it to have a little bit of security to the back of it. So I also took a piece of cardstock and I glued that to the back of the scrapbook paper and also trimmed that. So that way it was kind of a sturdier piece. And then to get this attached into the window, I took some Jenga blocks and I went ahead and used a total of eight of these uh, tower blocks and I glued them into the frame and then that way when I stick the back of the scrapbook paper on top of it, it has something to grab onto because otherwise the surface area um, on the window, if you were to try to glue this to exact directly to the window, wasn't very much and glue was gonna drip everywhere. So that's how I decided to attach it.
For the front of the sign, or window I should say, I decided to make a little wreath. So this is some of the garland from Dollar Tree and I just cut a small piece off and then I kind of shaped it in a circle or the shape of a wreath and I went in and Mr. miyagi did it by trimming some of these pieces because they were just really long and willy-nilly and it didn't quite fit in the window frame because they were just too long. And then once that was done, I took some of the pine cones that Shannon sent me and I just hot glued them randomly around on top of the wreath. The wreath isn't secure at this point. I don't know why I'm doing on top of the window, to be honest. I'm probably not the brightest idea, but you know, it is what it is. And then I took some of these little berries that I got from Dollar Tree, and I'm just pulling a few of them off. And then once I get the berries on there, I had this little Mary sign that came in a pack from Dollar Tree, and I was going to put it on there natural, but then I realized, oh, it needs a little color. So I went ahead and just painted it with one coat of brown wax, and I had to remove some of the pine cones because they were in the way, and then I glued the Mary sign directly onto the wreath. And then once that was done, I just hot glued this whole thing onto the window. Now, you certainly could do some other things like work in little fairy lights if you wanted to um, with the the window pane being um, just with paper on the back, you could attach the battery pack to the back of it and just kind of pull the lights up from the bottom and then wrap them around the wreath. That would be super cute if you wanted to do that. But there you go, a cute little window Christmas theme sign. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I will be using this home sign. So I wanted to pull the letters out. The H and the O came out and then it broke. And then when I wiggled the, tried to wiggle the E out, I broke the E. So there was a lot of doctoring to be done, but I was able to get them all out. And then once they were all out, um, I did not like the extra wood at the bottom of the letters where it was stuck into the thing. I'm a very detail oriented person, so that just bothered me. So I went ahead and trimmed off the extra wood at the bottom of the letters. And I just used my box cutter along with my little mini saw. Now that the letters are all cut apart, as you can see there on the top of the screen, I'm gonna get my truck ready. So this was a sign from Dollar Tree last year. And the first thing I need to do is just pop off the tree. I am gonna use that again when I put the sign back together. Once I get the tree popped off, I take some Goo Gone and I spray it on the glitter and then I scrape it off with the scraper and wipe it down. This is my preferred method of getting glitter off because it just kind of clumps and pulls together. And then once that's finished, um, the it's not called a hubcap. The back of the truck, the wheel well, I think is what it is, uh, was not centered over the tire. And of course that drove me bonkers. So I popped that off and got it on there properly. <laughs> and then I went ahead and went in with some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color ink. And all it needed was one coat. While the truck was drying, I took my home letters and painted them with one coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson. While the home letters are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and go in and paint the hubcaps as well as the wheel wells with some of this 
galvanized tin paint by folk art i love using this because well it looks like galvanized tin and so i'm going to go ahead and just put one coat on the um, wheel wells and then it took a couple coats for the hubcaps to cover in all the way now i need to get the back ready i wanted to put a suitcase in the back and i also will be using the tree again so i kind of took this uh wood plank from dollar tree and just wanted to position to kind of see where i needed to cut it so what i ended up doing was just marking um it where i where it was going to stick out of the truck and then i knew that i needed to cut a little bit below that so that i could secure it to the truck now to trim up this wood plank um i go down about an inch from where i had marked it i'm just going to score it with my box cutter and then all i have to do is just use my miter shears and it cuts perfectly jingle bells ringing in my ear jingle bell a sound that's oh so dear frosty the snowman is all around town watch out the rain these are falling down we stay up waiting for seven to now I need to get my suitcase covered. So I'm using some red and black Buffalo check scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just cutting a piece to make sure that I can wrap it so that the front, the top and the sides of the suitcase are covered all the way because that's what will be visible. And I'm just gonna use a combination of a glue stick and some hot glue to get this scrapbook paper attached to this piece of wood. And then once that was on there, I knew I needed a little luggage handle. So I had this brown suede rope stuff. I really don't even know where it came from. It was just in my stash, but I thought it would make a great little faux leather handle. So I went ahead and cut a small piece of that and hot glued that to the top. And then I was ready to go ahead and assemble the back of the truck. I'm ready to go ahead and start attaching these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hot glue my suitcase to the truck. Then I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue the tree in and I will flip it over and kind of secure it a little bit more with some more hot glue. And then once both of those are done, I wanted to make a small luggage tag for my suitcase. So I took one of these white tags from Dollar Tree and um, I did my best to draw an airplane and then I put HOU because I am in Houston and that's the abbreviation for the one of the airports here in Houston. And I tied that to the suitcase. Once that was all finished, I was ready to go ahead and get my wording onto the truck. time for the last step which is to go ahead and get our words on the sign so I'm gonna take my home letters and I'm gonna arrange them on the sign and then I will secure those to the truck with some hot glue and then for the rest of the words I decided instead of using my Cricut or using stencils I was just gonna freehand it so I took my pencil and I just wrote I'll be and then it says home and then for Christmas and I'm just gonna take a paint marker I finally was able to pick up a sharpie paint marker and I'm just gonna trace over those letters and then this sign is all finished the last step is you can add if you're not gonna lean this up against a wall or something you can just add a little hanger to the back of the truck I'm gonna be using the foam blocks for this next DIY. Actually, I was gonna use all four blocks, but then I changed it to one. So this is another one of those, if 
you do this idea, please shout me out at Creative on the Cheap on Instagram because someone did the skeleton idea I suggested with the YMCA. So what I originally was going to do was wrap all four of these blocks and use them kind of like faux wood blocks where you could do words on them and put letters like ho, 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 or you could do Christmas trees or, you know, just make them look like faux wood blocks. Then I nixed that idea and I decided I wanted to make a tray filler or something that I could use because I always seem to have like one or two little spots where I need a little something and I thought this would be a good idea. So I decided to turn it into a little present. However, at this point, I really still didn't quite know what I was doing. So I'm making this harder than what it needs to be. But what you want to do is you want to get it wrapped up. You could wrap it like a present if you want to from the get go, which would be your easiest option. Or you could piece it together. So I would recommend maybe taking a piece that would go all the way around the skinnier side of the block instead of what I'm doing right here. And then go ahead and do the wider sides all the way around. Up to you how you want to wrap it. But in the beginning, I wasn't going to put a piece on the bottom. Like I said, I really had no idea what I was doing at this point. I was just kind of like, oh, let's see what happens. And anyway, by the time I finally got it wrapped, then I was ready to take one of the little chalkboards and I wanted, I knew I was going to want to attach a chalkboard to it. So I needed to get the clothespin off. And so I thought I could just be superwoman and just rip it off, but that didn't work. So I took my heat gun and my metal scraper and I thought, okay, I'm just going to heat up my heat, uh, my scraper and I'll just slide it through on the glue. Yeah, that didn't work so well either. In my head, it went really well, but in reality, it just didn't work. And so I decided, you know what, this is going to be 3D and it's going to stick off this present. So I'm just going to leave that little piece of clothespin on there. And that's exactly what I did. So once that was decided, um, I went ahead and pulled out these little wood figures that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby last year. I never used any of them. And um, well, you know, it. I decided I probably need to use some. So I kind of just went through and picked out which ones I thought would look good. Ultimately, I decided on Santa because number one, Santa was on the paper. And number two, it fit the best on the chalkboard. Then after I fidgeted with it for a little bit, um, before I attached the chalkboard, I wanted to go ahead and tie a piece of twine to it um, to make it, again, kind of look like a present. I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it, but I just ended up doing one piece and tying a bow. And then from there, I was ready to go ahead and hot glue my chalkboard to the front of it. And then I just added two little pieces of greenery that I had in my stash. But now I have a little filler that I can just kind of put, you know, in the back of a tray or wherever there's a hole to decorate with. And I need something to put it there. So there you go. A little foam faux present. This next DIY is one of those, do you really even call it a DIY? But I was really determined to use everything that Shannon sent me. So I'm going to be using one of the binder clips and I'm going to take some of this rope that I bought on Amazon. It is thicker than just regular twine, but not quite as thick as the Dollar Tree nautical rope. And I'm just going to hot glue it, start it, and I'm just going to wrap it around the binder clip. And then once that's done, all I'm going to do is take one of the Dollar Tree wooden stickers and I'm just going to use the snowflake and I'll hot glue that to the top of it. And that's it. Easy peasy pie, easiest DIY in the world. It literally took me maybe two minutes to make this. And there's all kinds of fun stickers. So you could definitely make a variety of these if you wanted to but super cute little napkin ring. This DIY, I'm gonna be working with the little uh, trinket box that she gave me that had the bumblebee on the lid. I'm just using the bottom part of it and I cut out this little uh, design on Cricut Design Space. It was in there. Um, preloaded design images and it just says elf cam and has a little camera lens and I'm just going to apply this to the front of it and then once the decal is on there I've got these elf feet from one of the elf signs that they have this year and I'm simply going to take the uh, stand that the home letters were in and I'm going to get these elf feet secured into the home stand.
to get the elf shoes nice and secure in this stand, I do take some tower blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna go ahead and anchor it by putting two on the bottom. And then I knew that I needed to make a little platform for the uh, elf cam to actually sit on. So I'm gonna attach one to the top of the shoes on the back. And then I'm gonna attach one that holds that up um, to the bottom. Well, I'll just let you watch, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just wanna make sure you have this really, really secure in there because that trinket box is pretty heavy. And to secure the elf cam to the top, I'm just gonna put a bunch of hot glue on that tower block and then just center it on the top of that and just make sure that it's nice and secure. And then once that was done, I wasn't really liking the natural color of this stand. It was kind of conflicting with the white in the um, elf cam. So I went ahead and took some brown wax and I brushed it all over the stand. And there you go. You got yourself an elf cam to keep an eye on. Whoever it is, you need to keep an eye on whether it's a child, an adult, or maybe a dog or a cat. Probably more likely a cat than a dog. Corns and glitter are what is on this sign. So the first thing I needed to do was take off the twine and the clothespins and put those aside. And then I needed to get the glitter off and my first thought was, oh, I'll just rip the paper off because it looks like it'll just come off. And then it wasn't coming off and I was having issues with the glitter. And so I ultimately just took it outside and I went ahead and sanded it really quickly. And then I also, while I was sanding it, kind of um, took some of the sharp edges away. So I hit the edges of the sign as well as the corners of the sign just to kind of make it not so, I don't know, crisp and clean. I just wanted it a little more beat up looking. Once it was all sanded and it was ready to go, then I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and I gave it one good coat of paint. Grab the cat toy now. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out something to do with the green or blue part, but I knew what I wanted to do with the ball that was in this cat toy. So I'm gonna turn this into a bell. So the first thing I needed to do was break it open and because the inside is blue as well. And I'm gonna paint this whole thing with, with some Waverly silver lining chalk paint just to kind of act as a primer. Once that's on there and it's dry, I'm gonna go back in with that galvanized tin paint from Folk Art and give it a good coat of paint. While the bell is drying, I made this decal um, on my Cricut and I'm going to position this, but I kind of needed to see where the bell was going to hang down. So that's why I'm holding that and my um, words are kind of off center. They're not right in the middle of my sign. I'm going to go ahead and apply the decal. And then with the bell, I needed to make sure that it was hanging. So I just took a piece of twine. There was a hole at the top of it and I stuck it through, tied a knot, secured it in with some hot glue. And then that gave me the little string that I needed to hang the bell. Now I'm ready to go ahead and attach my ribbon. So I've got a piece of burlap ribbon here. Obviously it was a little too wide. So I went ahead and trimmed this one down. I really like this ribbon because it doesn't fray and it's kind of stiff. So I made it um, long enough so that I could just wrap it around and I'm just gonna hot glue it down. Once that one's down, I'm gonna take a piece of this Buffalo check, check ribbon. This came from Dollar Tree. And again, I'm just gonna hot glue that down. And then the twine that's attached to the bell was long. So I'm just gonna wrap that around tie a bow, trim off the tail, and then this sign is finished. We are now approaching the last DIY, which I was determined to use this pen. So I'm going to let you watch me and see what I do with it because you know what? I keep it real on this channel. This ended up being a huge fail. I've got some real audio here at the end of this DIY for you. So I'm going to tell you what I was trying to do. 
So first, I ripped off his eyeballs. After I did that, this pin was very, very thoroughly attached. Uh, or the fu I should say the fuzz was thoroughly attached to the pin. I had to melt the glue a little bit with my heat gun. In the process, I also melted the eyeball because I couldn't get the eyeball, the second eyeball off. Anyway, my plan was to make a really like, you know, anthropology pottery barn type wispy tree. So what do I do? I took it outside and I spray painted it. That's right. I spray painted it. And well, I really don't have much else to say other than I'm just going to let you see what transpired and listen to the real audio because <laughs> this thing got the best of me. It me. Okay. This is not even a DIY. Look at this. I didn't even. <sighs> oh, hey, everybody. You know, well, first of all, I spray painted, which I shouldn't have. I think that jinxed me in the first place. This looks like a troll got murdered under here. I, what is this? I can't. Oh. I feel a need to text Shannon and be like, hey, <laughs> you are sneaky with these little. <sighs> I mean, seriously, what was I thinking? I don't This is so stupid. I can't believe I'm just standing here staring at this thing, willing it to look pretty. It looks like it has mange. It's it's like cotton candy that got moldy and has mange, like a dog. It's a mange tree. It's a mange tree. I mean, I can't show this. This is like... I, it's like, hey everybody, I reverted back to my kindergarten ways and did kindergarten crafting today. If I had patience, the top probably wouldn't have looked like that. It would have been more like this. Or if I'd separated, there, you know what, whatever. Why am I justifying this? This just looks stupid. This is worse than the Charlie Brown tree. Oh my gosh, Shannon. I can't quite, I don't think I've sent you a box yet, but guess who's sending you a box next? This girl, man. Be proud of your work, everybody, because I guarantee you it looks better than this. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Squashed dead trolls under there. Mange Christmas tree. That tree looks so dumb. Ugh. Thanks guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Thanks again to all my buddies for participating in another round of the Dollar Tree Mystery Box Challenge. Make sure you click that link down below and go check out everybody else. Let me know which one of these DIYs was your favorite. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.